terminology related to the bonds. So we can use this um, terms, uh, uh, terms like uh, time to maturity, uh, yield to maturity, uh, coupon rate, uh, bonds sold at par value, or bonds sold with discount or premium, um, and the cost of uh, cost of uh, uh, capital uh, that would be called debt. So cost of debt uh, is exactly the, the yield to maturity with uh, in these bonds, right? So. Uh, am I right? This is this is now for you obvious, or do you have some kind of questions related to this uh, videos, these materials? No questions. So I understand that it's everything is clear. Clear. Probably during uh, calculations we'll get the questions, if any. OK, so uh, so now any one of you had uh, made this calculations for your companies for the, did you uh, download the data or get the data from from some sources? Of your companies who would like to show this share with us the best, of course, in Excel it would be. No one? If no one, then I will select someone. Okay, so maybe let's, let's, uh, maybe Miss Paulina Jackowska. Are you here with us still? Yes, however, we are looking for a data now with my team. Okay, okay maybe. looking for the data. Let me see what is the company that you are, pa Miss, Miss Paulina, right? Uh, Miss Paulina, I don't see you. Oh, no, here. The company is Atrion. Atrion, right? So now I will share with you maybe Atrion. Uh, and now we maybe write in Google bond or and I suggest for you doing the same. So write the name of your company in Google and bond uh, issue. And then let's see. Uh, what I see uh, balance sheet. WSJ. This is the, the first one. Mm, X, I'm the page. Um, and then what we see here, uh, bonds maybe, control F, bond, bond, if there is something like bonds, maybe like bonds, I'll just, CB bonds, com, Atrion, information about the issuer. Let's see what is here. Okay, I see that there is some, there is some kind of uh, uh, so this is an ordinary share and what is the bond? Mm, high performance blah, 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 needs to be registered, but they yeah, so let's try to find oh no finance Yahoo maybe. Mm, mm, barons. And now from the uh, from the question for your team, did your did this uh, uh, company issued any bonds and how much is that? This we should already know from the reports, right? From the financial reports. Because if we would have this report and in the report, maybe there would be some uh, code for the bond ticker of the and then you can find the ticker and it will be much easier to, uh, so consider current assets investment which because I'm, I'm reading the i will maybe share the screen with you um, here 
here. Let's share the screen maybe. Uh, let's share the desktop. Uh, do you see, right? This is the, the financial statement of this company from 2019. Do you see it? Yes, yes, yes we can see it. Yeah, yes. so of course, download it for your own and let's search the, the bonds, right? So what here is short term investments, but there is their investment, so they keep the investments bond, right? So this is not interesting for us because we want to check their bonds. Long term investments, no, because so this is the assets part. So let's send, let's check if they have something to their uh, total mortgage cost and fair value of our investments and the rate gross. Uh, so this is their investment still, from what I understand at least from this, so it's their investment, but we want to see their uh, oh, line of credit. So this is something, patents and licenses. Let's see, investment. Mm, we have investment in commercial papers. They have some line of credit, so we see that this is one source, the simpler one to uh, evaluate the source of the uh, debt, right? This is the line of credit in the bank. So they write here, everybody see this, right? And uh, that for these days, they, they had this million of revolving credit. Revolving credit is like the credit that you can just, it's like open line of credit in the bank, right? That it's, you know, if you use it, they will, after some time, the bank will just fill it up again to 75. It depends on the, uh, of, of course, on the conditions. Well, this is not disclosed probably here, what are the exact conditions. But interest under the credit facility is uh, assessed at 3090 and uh, 306090 LIBOR. And the LIBOR, what, everybody know what is LIBOR? No. Okay, very important for this uh, uh, part for you to understand. LIBOR is London Interbank Offered Rate. Like in Poland, we also have the VIBOR, which is the uh, Warsaw Interbank Offered Rate. Those, this is the rate of borrowing between the banks. So one of the ba one bank to each other bank will borrow uh, borrow with this rate. And this rate you can find, for example, if you go to Yahoo. Mm -hmm. If you will write um, LIBOR, uh, LIBOR 6M, maybe. Oh, it seems that Yahoo is a bit stupid, but let's see here. Six months, uh, London Interbank of Fudge Rate. We can watch it in this other program, other sort of website. And here we, of course, need to accept all the stupid cookies and all the stuff, but uh, so if we uh, we have the six months uh, London Interbank right currently this and this is the how does it look right in uh, the period of time. So on how much bank banks borrow to each other, uh, each other, uh, each other, you know, money. And we see that this is for the USD because it's for euro is different for for you know and for different maturities. So one month, two months, six months. Uh, year to date, uh, one year and three years. So, for example, we want to see the young longer. We see that for the three years currently, so it's let's say currently from the 7th of uh, March, the LIBOR is 0.9625%. Uh, so, bank borrow each other from 0.19% for, for the period of three years. This is the longer term. If we want to have the shorter term, uh, we see that banks borrow for, for them in last quotation is a 0.19625 uh, uh, rate, right? So for this rate, is this is, the, of course, we can also for this, this is for the dollar, we can find for the other currencies. Uh, uh, the portal that is also I can uh, I recommend you is portal Stoku, uh, stoku.com, can be then at least some if this will be in English. So in the stoku.com, if you write here, let's say, Let's assume that we want to strengthen the euro rate. So then it will be Euribor. So we, Euribor. And then you can choose like Euribor three months, one month, six months. This is the, the period for which time the banks borrow to each other. Well, this is important. Banks to each other, right? If we want to have just the LIBOR, uh, LIBOR and then you can see you have HF, which is uh, Swiss franc, dollar, and so on, so on. We can use, the, let's say, uh, LIBOR USD, one, one Y, it means for one year, LIBOR for the dollars, so in currency dollar. Here we have the rates. Um, can I get line? 
Mm, this is just like look like that in five months, in 10 years, it looks like that. So, for example, in 2018, the LIBOR was 3% and currently the LIBOR is 0.27 percent. OK, percent. So bank borrowed each other in 2018 for 3 percent. They were borrowing each other and now 0.27. Of course, this is related with the monetary cycles in the world, the policies on the Fed and so on, so on, right? OK, and now we see that they borrow at uh, LIBOR uh, as a selected by by them, right? Plus 0.87 percent. So in December 2019, this rate totally with this 0.87 percent and this is called margin. You see this is what I'm showing now, right? This plus 0.875 percent. Yes, yes. So this is just so in other words, it's LIBOR generally. It's it's LIBOR plus margin. Right and in that moment it was exactly 2.64, right? But generally it's LIBOR plus margin. And why margin? Because ba uh, the bank will not borrow to other company. It is not bank because between banks there is first, uh, there is like some kind of, the, they know each other. Second, there are the financial institutions. Third, they are covered by the financial system, uh, the national bank and so on, so on, Fed or uh, and so on. So this is a special institutions bank. This is why they borrow each other cheaper. Now, to borrow to the company that is uh, not in this business, they borrow with the margin. So this 0.87% is less profit for the bank, okay? And they are paying this monthly. So this is how, uh, how this is calculated. And this is very, very often like that, calculated for the cost of, of uh, debt. And we have here, remember, that you need to calculate cost of debt. Point, point B, cost of debt, right? This is what we are discussing now for this five points for your for your grade. So to calculate the cost of grade uh, of the debt, you can use the uh, for the portion that is related to the credit from the bank, uh, LIBOR plus the margin, and very often it's written how much is the margin. Now you can check this how much this margin was in the previous line with the previous because this is from 2019. You can check 2017, 16, 15, 14, even 2000 year and check this. You can also go to the Federal Reserve uh, website and check what was this margin on average during given period of years because Polish Bank, National Polish Bank uh, published such data. So I think that the United States Fed also will publish such data. So this margin is very important because LIBOR is uh, historically is available. You see here you click historical data. You click here. You have a daily interval, weekly, monthly, whatever you want from 86. You can click show and you have all the data and you can download them in CSV file. It's the stoku.com. This is the website in, in probably in these other ones like uh, this. I don't know market watch or the uh, Yahoo, you can also do it probably. There is a high chance, but I recommend you this because it's easier for me at least. Right? So those are the yields. Those changes are the changes of the yields. So the changes are not interesting for us. For the for the prices, if those would be the prices, then that these changes would be interesting for us. But those are the yields. So we are not interested in the changes of the yields. Okay? Because those are very big sometimes. Uh, but those are the close, and of course we are interested in the close price, I mean the close uh, yield. So this is already yield, this is already in the percentage. This is our yield to maturity from the bond class that you just read, okay? So if we make it yearly, we can see that in 2000 year the, the rate was 6% LIBOR. In 1998 it was 5%. In 2011 was 0, 1, 1.12. In 2008, it was 2%. In 2018, 3%. And currently, 0.28%. Okay? Clear? This is clear? Anyone can confirm? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, great. So we can get this information. How is this margin and how is the LIBOR? LIBOR we can get historically from the, uh, from the um, data internet. The, the margin, it can be taken from Fed, probably, or from some kind of other reports. You can find it there, general reports, or you can find it also in the uh, in the report of the company. So when we sum these things, we know that this is 2.64% in 2019, and this was the cost of cr credit, cost of debt, if we 
in the form of credit from the bank or line actually line of credit revolving credit in the bank okay now we are also uh, say, say uh, we know also that if this company issued bonds and then we can again search this word bond and this is your task to, to do it right um, then uh, this company also needs to pay interest and they also have to have uh, they also have to have the Mm, from this some kind of interest rates paid and this will be also the cost but now I don't see this uh, because this is like a specific format written every report can be different income we well, need to find what is the balance sheet or something like that right because in the balance sheet it will be written if this company has debt how much is this debt and um, maybe it would be written also the cost something about the cost of this debt so we need to search it but this is your role right you need to do this uh revenues per data financial total assets long-term debt oh you see so this company long-term debt doesn't have any long-term debt so this is very easy to, to for you there is just no long-term debt it's great because it means that this, this now we are moving to what we are moving to discussing what is the financial structured the, the financial composition of this company right this is related to the point number um, let me check where is it written oh here in the point c context of optimal capital structure of the business so the capital structure for this company it seems that it's zero percent debt this is why i couldn't find easily the bond quotes for this company because they don't have any bonds it seems so at least at least for 2019 because maybe now they have so it's zero percent debt and it's 100 percent equity so in other words there is the wave at average cost because we'll be waiving equity and waiving debt the cost of them and we just create some kind of waived average for this 100 percent would be only the equity so in the in other course in other words by calculating the cost of equity you will calculate the cost of the weighted average cost of capital of this company because there is no other cost so it's a peculiar example uh, now uh, do you have other examples from other companies listen uh, students you need to um, do this kind of things that i'm asking you working on that because if not there would be a problem with understanding because we these things that we are discussing they are the simplest thing that can be ever right so the more or the the, the more the longer we we go into this uh, this topic the more complicated things there will be so i need to see that you are you know easily getting these things that we are discussing now because they are easy uh, let's say another company miss 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 alina Alina, which what is your company? Hey, yeah, I was asking you about which one ah, to choose, so okay. I'm in the process. You're still choosing. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Vladislava, Miss Vladislava. Uh, yes, my company is uh, Etron. Ah, you are here still. Okay, so I'll, I will ask maybe Mr. Mentemir. Mentemir. Are you with us? Yes, yes, I'm here. OK, great. So your company um, is uh, this American Water, American uh, Water Works. Yeah. Great. So tell me, do you know something about the capital structure of this company or maybe debt issue? I don't know. Do, do they have any debt? Uh, uh, really, I don't know uh, right now because we are choosing the responsibilities uh, between our teammates. Okay, okay. So, so I'm not ready yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I understand. To discuss it. Okay, because you see, why I uh, um, I would like to have some real example because if I will just create an example for you, what is this? Someone is writing. Uh, okay, just hello. So not hello. I'm during the classes and cannot write to me in, in the chat. I said 
to all of you also. So uh, if we are, uh, if I will choose some kind of example, and in Excel I create some simple example of that, it will be much less useful for you than if we will use the real example of your of your data, because then we already on during the classes we did a portion for at least for this group that will show this data we did a part a small part. So maybe I know, uh, anyone else who would like to say something from these groups that has prepared something they they I know there is a person chosen and responsible or maybe you could download some data. So let's do this example on because you know why we cannot use the, this uh, this company. We cannot use this because it, it's peculiar. It doesn't have the cost of that. So we would like to not 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 do this, right? So uh, AWK, American Water Works company. Let's see about them. If we will just check this uh, financials and and see this, this will be a simple, of course, right? And we go to the balance sheet. In the balance sheet, we will see, uh, at least we hope that we will see, of course, the total assets, total liabilities, and minor, minor capital, interest, um, and we can find maybe working capital, invested capital, maybe or oh, total debt. There is this, this issue. So this company has the debt, right? So we can copy this for you to have it, and maybe let's, oh, it's annual, so it's good. So this will be our simple example. Of course, this is very simplified because we don't have the full data. And then uh, let's open the um, Excel. You see Excel, all of you? Yes, do you, you yes, see that I'm yes, copying? Yes. Let's see. Oh, it's copying in a bad format. Uh, not good. This is why exactly it would be nice if you would have some data because if we don't have data, I just need to create data and I can do this, but it's not useful for you so much. Because I can use, for example, where is this data? They had it here somewhere. Mm. Oh, here. Mm. Oh, it can be this one. It's a Polish company. This is a, a, a part of their balance sheet. Of course, doesn't have anything to do, and this would be great if you would be using your I will just write to the uh, questions only during the class, please. Uh, so this is the this is the the Polish company that produce a pattern produce I think on the something of the um, I think the building uh, sites and I think they have also the uh, yeah the, the, they are produced I think this in a building sector more or less. So here we have this will just hide not have in Polish and here we have the balance sheet right if we open the balance sheet we can see assets. And this 2016, it has 846 uh, because it's in thousands. So this is 846 million, right? Everybody see this data? Maybe now better. Yes, you can see this data that I'm showing you. Yes. Okay. Yes. So this, what I'm showing to you, you have to find something like that for your own company. And what we are now doing, we need to do for your company. Okay. I mean, you need to do it for your company. And uh, our goal is to first identify what is the capital structure of this company. This is one thing. And second goal is to find what is the cost of the debt. And the cost of the debt has two forms. White, and, and of course, you can make notes. What I'm saying here now during these classes, it's, it's you can make notes. Of course, it does, I think, or maybe it will be also said in some lectures during, I mean, some videos, so probably you could listen in the video, but if not, then it's good for you to make notes. So. Uh, uh, capital structure is one thing. Second thing, if in this capital structure we can uh, uh, divide two elements, we can uh, um, see two elements. One element is the equity and the cost of equity. The other is debt and the cost of debt. And now we are moving to the cost of debt, only this part for a moment. And in the cost of debt can has two forms. One form of this debt can be bond, bonds, right, issued, and the other can be credit, which is 
this is exactly that we are just discussing as the credit line. Now in Poland, this component, because it's in Poland, we can we have some uh, something that it's called catalyst. Catalyst. Uh, where is the you need to search? Uh, you need to find this kind of uh, maybe even in English. Actually, you can check on oh, catalyst. I think here is. So this is a, a company that I mean this is a quote. This is a stock market. It's 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 quotes for the bonds. So we have the insurers of the bonds. Uh, maybe let's see the quotations, corporate bonds quotations, and then uh, in these quotations we'll see the the different companies. I don't know. For example, maybe in Poland or Alior Bank. Maybe this have heard uh, um, Bosch Bank, Bank Pocztowy, some different kind of companies. Let's see if there is here a pattern. There is no a pattern here, right? So it means that uh, the, they didn't issue the bonds that, or they didn't issue the bond at all, or they didn't issue the bonds that are publicly quoted. But let's assume that if we would choose the company that is, for example, uh, and not financial one, so not the oh, GPW. GPW is the, the 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 stock itself. The stock market has is is a is a public company, and you can buy the portion of the stock market. In Poland, it's called Giełda Papieru Wartościowych. This is like like G P and W, right? Because the, the the stock market exchange. And they issue two kind of bonds. By the way, here a few words for you about the bond quotes that you probably know from the other classes. I hope that you know this. So this bond you see, the symbol is GP, the GW, GPW 0122. Uh, of course, the first three letters usually say something about who is the issuer. The last four uh, uh, numbers shows the, the month and the year of uh, of the months getting to, to be uh, losing the, you know, being paid, repaid, right? So this is the maturity date. So it's January 22. So in one year, more or less, in one year, this bond will be uh, out. And here you have the quotes. You see here we have the open price, minimum, maximum, the last transaction, how many, what does the volume and so on. So you see, this is like how students don't understand to not write on the on the on this uh, chat, right? So here we have the here we have the quotes, and if you actually click this thing, and probably something like that in the United States also exists, you can find actually the small calculator the the stock market provides, and this calculator will tell you, will show you when you click it, it will show you uh, what is the. Um, what is the um, yield for this bond? I just don't know why it doesn't work because it's short. Oh, okay. So here we have uh, here we have some data about this, right? It's not important for you. Important for you that here is the um, you can find. Oh, so this is the, the kind. Of, unfortunately, it's in Polish now. So you see that the kind of the percentage that this bond is paying is exactly. V, but instead of LIBOR, we have the v, VIBOR because it is Polish market, right? Plus the margin, which is in Polish marja, margin, right? And currently the, the margin is 0 0.62 and current current uh, uh, coupon rate is 1.20. This is the coupon rate, but we don't want the coupon rate because it depends. The coupon rate is just a nominal one. We want to know what is the, the, real, the real, real payment, the real YTM. And here you have. The real YTM for this is 0.40%. So if this, what does it mean? If this bond will, will be issued today, an investor would buy it, with, then it would be 0.4% uh, per year this investor would earn. It seems that it is a very small amount because probably this issuer is quite safe, at least according to the market, right? You see that even if you calculate the net, because this is gross, because you need to pay some taxes and so on, so on. So if you have the net one, right? You would, it means it's negative. So it's actually investors are um, buying this, which is of course irrational because why I would prefer to keep money in my home than putting them to the this bond, pay some fees and you know some provisions for uh, for the for the um, brokerage house. I prefer just keeping cash you know, instead of losing 0.06 percent per year. So this is what we want to have. This is what you want to have. This is the bonds. Yield, YTM, yield to maturity. This is what you need to find for your bond. 
Okay, so let's assume let's assume that this uh, just for uh, 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 our example here that this company that you, of course all this data you found for your company uh, has some bonds and has some uh, credit. Let's say this will be. Uh, I will let's first let's first find how much debt they have. Okay, so we have to here assets. Here we have the equity and liabilities. This is the basic of the accounting. We all of no, all of us know this, and then we can find. Uh, something that is called debt, long-term debt, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So bond liabilities, you see zero. Financial liabilities, this is the amount. Trade car so the current liabilities, it's the difference between the current liabilities and non-current liabilities is like that long-term debt and short-term debt, right? So the current is the short-term. So they have 302 million of the debt in the current one. And this is in different kind of forms, in this forms like payables, employee benefits, they have, you know, they own something to their employee, uh, tax liabilities, provisions, and they don't have any bonds. They don't have bonds liabilities, right? What we are interested, because this is capital, this capital, this, uh, I mean, sorry, this um, current liabilities, they should be actually, uh, they are from the point of the assets, because remember now we are on the liabilities side, but from the point of the assets, they should be related to the short-term capital, so-called working capital working capital so we actually this is not interesting for us because this short what by the way is the definition of the current liabilities someone can tell what is the difference between the current liabilities and the long-term liabilities non-current liabilities anyone could you repeat the question what is the difference between non-current liabilities and the current liabilities One. So is it about the time that we are obliged, let's say, if you have liabilities like credits, if it's a very long term or like we have to pay someone money, but we have, let's say, like five years to pay it, then it well, would so be not the current one and the current ones would be the ones which we are obliged to mm -hmm. repay like in the nearest future. And what is this nearest future? Because this is exact. Like this is exact well, number given uh, by the let's say like accounting law. One year. One year, exactly. It is it's one accounting year. It doesn't have to be because for example in the United Kingdom you don't the accounting year is, is like uh, starting in March. It's not necessary, it has to be not exactly the current the year uh, uh, you know um, the calendar year, right? But it's 12 months usually. In most of the companies, it's 12 months. There are some special, special, special cases, but we'll not be discussing those special cases. So it's 12 months. Uh, so if the liability, right, this short, the liability is like a debt, right? This debt is needs to be paid in a shorter than 12 months, uh, or 12 months or shorter. Then it's a, a short term, and this is called. Uh, current liability. If it's longer than this 12 months, then it's non-current liabilities. And we call it long-term debt. And this is in, in this part we are interested in long-term debt. So if we have bonds that are issued for six months, they are current. So we are not interested. But if we have the bonds that are issued for uh, three years or five years or 20 years or 100 years, because why not? Governments do such kind of things. Uh, even the companies, Disney has a bond that was 30 years. Uh, uh, the maturity was 30 years or 25. Uh, so it's possible. So this would be the long term debt. And we are interested in the long term debt. OK, so now in this company, the total assets and the total liabilities is this number, right? You see here 846 uh, million. Right. This is composed of equity, equity. Uh, Non-controlling interest, this is not important now for you. Non-current liabilities, so it's short-term debt and long-term debt. So what is interesting for you is like, this is long-term debt, long, long-term debt. Then this is the short-term debt. Of course, all of this that I'm doing, it would be nice to do it in your companies. If if there would be a group here that would have this data, we would do it on your data. So what does it mean? That when we provide, I provide you some formula now, you just, just drag this formula and you have it done. 
So this is why it's really worth for you to have some data prepared. OK, for the next classes, let's agree that you will have as much data about this company as possible and the best in Excel. Nice, clean format. Let you see here. This is nice, clean format 2016, 15, 14, 13. I could have more right if I want. I can have like a long term like from 97 about this company or the financial statement, not only the balance sheet because here, not only the balance sheet, but also the income statement, the cash flow statement, the financial ratios, DuPont indicators, all of this, right? This is a nice kind of thing. Sometimes it'll be not easy to get. It all depends, right? Uh, but you can do it. It's not impossible. You just can. It's only you need to have five years. It's not like for 50 years. It's just five years. OK, so you see if I sum this, this, this short term debt, long term debt and equity here, I write equity. And I will make this uh, in bold and yellow just for you to see. Right. So not counting this five, uh, five million here, which is the non controlling interest, and this is related because this is a group. This company is a, a group, so it can it has it has actually uh, in the past take take over some uh, companies or they bought them totally or not. And some of these companies maybe are not bought like in total, right? So this is not controlling interest is the let's say part of the equity because this is also usually accounted as equity, but this is a part of the equity that is like uh, still in the hands of other kind of a minority. In, uh, it's called minority interests. So like, for example, like they bought a company and they agreed with the previous owner of the company that they will leave this owner 10%, right? This is exactly this. This is this number. So usually they are very small. This minority interest, if we would compare it to the whole total liquidities, which is also total assets, would be only how much percent? This is the percentage. So it would be like 0 0.67%. So if this is the case, that it's like really small issue, a small number, and small number, I can consider everything that below is below 5% is a small number. This is why 5% is also assumed to be a uh, standard error in some kind of uh, research. So uh, if uh, if it's like that, we can just skip it. Okay, so we just skip it. I will just assume that this is equity. Okay, so this is equity. So I will just write that equity is actually this plus this and in my sum here I will just not add this part so this I will delete from the equations right so we see those numbers are uh, equal to each other true true Excel doesn't lie so we have so we have the total this is 100 percent of course 100 percent right because this is the total equity and the total assets are the same you you know this from accounting and they are composed of equity short-term debt and long term debt. And now we are interested for us, for our, I will make it to see maybe it's on one page uh, visible, maybe a bit all like that. We are actually interested in this equity and the long term debt. We assume that the short term debt is not interesting for us. Of course, we can check how much is each of these elements as a portion. And this is what I'm checking these elements as a portion of the total, which is this one the total right and we I'll just show them in the percentages so we will see how is the capital structure of this company and we can say about this company in 2016 year in 2016 only of course if I will do this like a uh, which is important for you let's assume here and let's assume uh, here and this we just uh, divide by this W mm, this W can change, so let's just not freeze it. And now let's focus on these numbers. And uh, this number. And this number. You see all of you see this this yellow ones that I just marked here, right? You see these numbers. Yes. That sum is obviously 100. It will be always 100 because this is, it has to be like that, right? So. If I'll just do it in, uh, with the formula with that uh, in the last five years, which is exactly for you the period that you need to analyze, we have some. This is the these numbers, all those numbers that I just marked now here. This is the 
capital structure of the company. Capital structure of the company. There are very interesting theories behind the capital structure, which means like the theories that shows like the capital structure should be like more equity or more assets. I'm sorry, or more long term debt. Right. This is like this is this theories you can find in book and I strongly encourage you to read uh, about this. Maybe we will be the pecking theory, uh, the neutral theory of the neutrality like that. That doesn't matter really the mod, model of Miller and Modigliani. They got Nobel Prize. I think one the one of the first or maybe the first Nobel Prize in the finance area uh, was exactly for the modern Mod, Miller Modigliani model that model when they were uh, and this is actually the part of the book that I would like and you, know, you have to read about this. You need to know about this because if you use this knowledge in your uh, in your report, this I will consider a chance for you to get more than let's say 65 or 70 percent because we'll not cover it exactly here because knowing that my uh, let's say knowing the history in the past and the students working and abilities and so on all of so on, we probably not will not probably have time to cover these topics exactly during the classes. So this is your reading in home, Moral Modigliani Milder model. Uh, I will briefly mention it. It's like the result. This is related with the pecking theory later, no trade theory of this uh, of this structure and with the uh, agent theory, the agent uh, problem in the company. OK, so it's a micro level. Uh, probably in macroeconomic, you have heard about the agent problem, right? The pr principal agent problem, the agency problem. Have you heard about this kind of phenomena? Agency problem. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, so you so you know that this is so you know what is it related, right? Uh, in agency problem, you have an agent that works for principal and not necessarily they have this common interest in the company. It's, it's very simple. I mean, it's it's very visible too. OK, so now let's skip for our uh, for you see. First of all, what we can observe, we can observe that this is like a. We could make a graph. We see that more or less those numbers are more or less stable, right? This is something between 50 2 percent to 50 to 62 percent. More or less, we could say that it's stable, and this is also 32, 32, 29, 31, 36. So this is also more or less stable. Of course, we could use a longer period of 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 of, of time, right? I could just like make it longer, and then we could see how is that in the the longer period, and we can see is it also stable or not? It's a bit less because here is one uh, drop 16, but if we cut. The, the one, the biggest, this is like the method also in statistics. If you cut the biggest and the smallest um, observation, right? So if you would cut here 62 and 52, the numbers will be between 53 and 59. And this is really a small range. Don't you agree? So, so these numbers are stable. Uh, now we can also exclude this short term debt or we can keep it in your analysis. It's up to you. But for the general purpose, we can exclude it. So we can say that uh, total equity, actually, the total equity would be, uh, we can assume that this short term debt is like uh, not relevant for us. So what we are carrying is only the equity and the long term debt. So if, so then we need to somehow get rid of that or we can just for a br here for this uh, brevity, we just I just delete it. OK, and then we see that uh, this number long term debt and the short term debt, right? Uh, because it's not added here because OK, because those the numbers are not adding. So I need to just uh, the total equity needs to be uh, this number. So I need to modify this number it needs to be equal this plus this. Uh, thank you very much, Kate. It's nice. Thank you very much for mentioning. Stuff of this life. I, I hear some, someone. OK, uh, so now you see that, of course, with this uh, with this kind of uh, uh, application and then getting rid of the short term uh, debt from our calculations from our universe, because for first it's not relatively for this, not, not so important, not so uh, relevant for this company because it was like 11 percent, something like that. Second, we from our classes, we focus on equity and long term. And you see that we do this, we do this thing and we focus on that. Then for our thing, like our equity will be the total equity will be long term debt plus equity only. And because of that, of course, the proportion between long term debt and equity 
needs to be always 100%. You see all these numbers, if I'm adding them, you see that the sum is 100%, right? Always. And this is uh, in a general form, because exactly this was not taken account, the short term debt and so or, on, it's skipped, right? It's deleted from the equation. This uh, non-controlling interest also is not relevant here. I assume that it's equity. So in a general form, this is what we call capital structure. So the proportion of equity and long-term debt in the total uh, in the total uh, of the equity. And in, in here, and equity and liabilities. And in here, we this equity and liabilities, we consider without the short term debt. OK, so this is this is the the capital structure. And now what we can say for this company, what I would like you to do, of course, all of this that I was doing, I would like you to do. And now we can calculate the average in the last five years of the equity and we can calculate the average of the debt. And of course, now because the average is not necessarily will be 100%, so we need to assume we can calculate only one. If you assume that the average is 60 of equity is 62%, the debt will be just one minus this because altogether there needs to be 100%, right? So this is why I did like that. Okay, so now we can assume that in short period of time, of time the proportion of the equity and, and debt is exactly this, 62% of equity, 38% of, of the debt. And this is the uh, time, this is the, uh, the, the financial structure of this company. Now, is this clear? Or yes. Do, yes? Do you don't have any questions related to this part? No, no questions. It was clear. It's, it's easy, right? So you need to do such kind of thing for your such kind of analysis that I did for your company. OK, so you need to know what is the proportion of equity in the last five years given every year separately, plus what is the average and the same for the for the uh, long term debt. But it will be probably, as I said, like you will not have the averages will be not summing to 100%. This is why you need to calculate one and the other will just one minus because all them together needs to be 100%. So now we have the proportions on which equity and the debt is in the company. Now we need to know what is the cost of equity and what is the cost of the debt. And we tell, we already, we already uh, knew Right, uh, where is this shape? So I will use maybe the shape of, of arrow that the long term debt uh, is uh, it can be divided into elements, right? And it can be uh, just mark this like um, just change the color. Uh, it can be the uh, in the form in a simplistic way, it can be some kind of like a bank uh, bank uh, bank bank credit or loan right and the other form maybe i'll just make it a bit upper here just to be more visible uh, it can be the bond for example some kind of bond some kind of a debt instrument right so those are the two two ways of, uh, of credit now, uh, short term, uh, this is the long term debt. Now, equity is just equity. The equity is just simply plain. What is equity? In what form is the equity uh, visible on, by us? How we can measure it? See in the quotation, see it. What is the form of the equity? It will be for the company that is on stock market, it will be. Stocks. Stocks, right? So this is the this is the uh, equity uh, this is the equity uh, part, right? And your task is to know how much is the equity, how much is the debt in the proportion in the last years. You need to also know. And now the problem is with this uh, with these theories that I told you, just I mentioned them, that in the end there is a many theories that explain what is the optimal structure. So how much it should be optimally for the company. Should it be 62 and 38 or 5 and 10, uh, 5 and 95 or 50, 50, right? Those are, this is the question. And this is the question for the 
for the managers of this company. Now, from the point of view of, of, of people who are uh, dealing with this uh, sectors, the business, there is a wide from the people because this is a short term, right? Short term capital capital structure. Right, this is short term capital structure, and of course, this is a short term capital structure. Right, why short term? Because five years it was calculated based on the five years. Okay, so maybe I'll just make this uh, under here just to be mixed with something else. Uh, right, so this is short term. You need to calculate here is written, you need to calculate uh, this in let's say, um, just mark it. Term. Here, uh, capital structure, short and long term. Short and term. Forecast of investment projects, short and long term. You see, this element has to be included in the project. So all of this that we are discussing here needs to be in the both kind of a dualistic kind of a view from you. Short term and long term. Now, for the next time, I really, really appreciate if you would have this Excel because Everything that I'm saying, I will not repeat because it's nonsense to repeat it because we need to move with the material. But it would be if you would have this kind of file that I'm sh sh doing it now here, you could save it and you can have it in home and you can just return to it, use the formulas, check, remember it, apply it for your uh, for your report. Therefore, you would have some portion of the of the job done during the classes, which is very nice for you, because if you will be a, a group that will be every class like, oh, oh, I want, we want, we want, we want, please use our files. And of course, you will be doing this stuff. I will not be doing this stuff. Just you will be doing this stuff. You will share the screen. And at the end of the classes, you will have everything done. And you just need to just combine it all together, just make some polishing here, polishing there, making a bit better. And it's the report is done. And you done the report during the classes. So after classes, you have free time totally. Oh, but for the other students, remember that's what we are showing according to the Ministry of Education. What I'm showing here is 30% of what you need to contain. The rest is in the books. The rest is your own work. So the proportion of the student work versus the the duration of the class, the lectures or meetings is like three to seven, right? 30% and 70%. So you need to know this. OK. So this is the this is the the short term. The question is probably now from you: What would be the long term, right? What would be the long term? And in the long term, yes, are you interested in what is who is interested? In what is long term? You can raise the hand. Who is interested about the long long term? How will be the capital structure in the long term? Okay, one person. So it's worth two people. It's worth to speak for you because of the rest of the class is just sleeping. I understand. Thank you. Thank you. Those two hands. Uh, you can lower them now. So I assume that uh, I'm speaking at least at least to two people. <laughs> so. Um, so the question, what will be the, sh the long term? How to calculate the long term? And in this uh, uh, in this file that I give you here, there is some kind of sources. One of the sources is the page of uh, a very good professor of, of exactly this related to the subject, Asfad Damodaran. If you go to his uh, website, uh, generally website of Asfad Damodaran, the professor from India. He has, I mean, he's from United, uh, from New York, from United States, but I think the origins he are uh, from India. So if you would uh, click the, the data on his website and you would, can, you would like to set the current data and you would exactly find a capital structure, you can even write like structure. And here is the capital structure. And you can find the capital structure, so the, the, the details, right? Type of debt, short term. You can find the ratio of the variables by industry, and this is exactly what we need. And what is like market debt ratio, the uh, effective tax rate, insider holdings, variance in operating income. This is not important. Fixed assets to the total assets. So this is also agency cost and so on. But we are we are interested in this market debt ratio because those uh, values that I showed you here. 
those values actually, right? They are, those values are the book values because this is from the book that is called balance sheet. Is accounting measures. This 448,000 equity, a million, and 302 million debt is in accounting standards. Now, this company can be capitalized on the market by 500 million, 800 million, 1 billion, whatever, a thousands of million, right? Two times more than this value. It would could be on the market because can market can just give this price. The market is not, there is no, you know, market is doing what market is thinking, right? It doesn't have to be exactly the same number. The same with the bonds. The bonds of this company can be, because you see, as I gave you the example of some kind of bonds of the, of the, uh, of the uh, stock market, right? The price of the bond is 100, 100.71. In the pricing of the bond, you need to remember that the, the, the rate, that the quote, the quote for this, this is the price. It's in the percents of the nominal value. So this actually means that what is the in this water, uh, in, in this, this water in dollar or in euro, what is the price? 100.71 percent times the nominal value and the nominal value is written here. Also, what is the nominal value of this bond? I don't know, this is working slower, this website is working slow. If the uh, price of this bond is 100 zloty, uh, we can actually check it. Uh, oh, great. Just return to this. Uh, main page, but let's let's go to this GPV uh, GPV. Uh, here, if we go with this bond again, uh, we see that the nominal value here is 100. So the what is nominal in Polish? Nominal value is 100. It could be a 1000. Then if you multiply, if you multiply this 100.71 times 100, it would be what it means it would that this bond would cost 100 zloty and 71 groshe. But if the nominal value here wouldn't be, it, if it wouldn't be a uh, 100, but a 1000, it means that this bond, the, the, because of this rate, the, the, the real price of the bond on the market would be 1070 groshe, uh, 1007 zloty and 10 groshe, okay? because this is just the percentage of the nominal value. In this case, particular, actually we had the bad luck because it would be more interesting if it would be 1000, then I could tell you that the price of this bond would be uh, 1077 zloty. So if it's like, because if it's like that, so it's, it's quoted above the nominal value, but here in the books, if this would be the same company, because this is totally different company, right? This is a pattern, the other is GPV. But let's assume that this, this a pattern has the same bonds, it's quoted like that and so on. So those long-term debt, if they are in form of that, because we don't even know if it's bank credit or is it bond, but let's assume that this is in bonds. So this quotation here, this, this accounting here in the statement, in the book accounting, would be assuming that the, 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 the price of the bond is always nominal value, okay? It would be just the nominal value because those are the rules of accounting. So here would be in a nominal value, but in a market price is higher, a 1% higher, right? Because you see, it's uh, no, 0.71% higher, right? That's it. So those are the difference between the book values and the nominal values. And returning to the website of the uh, Aswad Damodaran, which was here, we see that this is the market debt ratios. And now if we don't load this market debt ratio uh, of the, uh, for the United States, and we uh, open this. This is exactly what is a nice work because it's updated, it's given to you. This is a very good source for you. So as for the Modern website, of course you need to, if you use it, you need to quote it. You need to, you need to credit the, the data is from this website, okay? Now, here we can choose the industry name and uh, let's assume that uh, our industry now, so we, I know that we are s s switching from the, GPV company to a pattern company to this uh, water company, but in, in let's assume that for this water company that it would be utilities. Some kind of utilities. 
And you see, there will be no drugs because it's not for pharmaceutical, it's not a gas distribution, it's not general, but it's also there is a special water utility. So you click and then uh, this professor checked that there is 17 companies, some 17 firms, and the book to debt ratio is 58 and the market to debt ratio, uh, debt to capital is 28% and uh, market DE, so debt to equity is 41%. Uh, market debt to capital is 28%. And it's adjusted for leases. So there, if there's some leasing from this company, uh, it's like that. So what do we see? We see that uh, market debt to to capital is 28%, uh, uh, 28%, right? We could also calculate these values from, from this De debt to equity. It's 41%. If we now small mathematics for you. If we know that D divided by E is equal, uh, D divided by E is equal uh, 0.4, this is 40%, right? And we know that uh, if we both of these numbers would be divided by the, uh, the, there is some kind of summing here, right? If we know that the debt plus equity is equal assets, right? Assets. We can write like that, that uh, because of this equation, debt plus equity is equal assets, we can sell that uh, debt is equal assets minus equity, correct? It's a simple mathematics, right? So if we plug this thing into this equation above to this first equation here, we, it would be like that. Uh, assets minus equity divided by equity is equal 0.4. Is also true. This is just in the brackets. So we could say now if we divide assets by equity and we minus it as equity by equity, I will write it, but we know that all of us that it's one, right? Then this is equal 0 0.4. So assets divided by equity minus one is equal 0 0.4. So Assets divided by equity is equal 1.4, right? So the equity divided by assets, which is actually our proportion because equity divided by assets is the same as equity divided by equity plus liabilities, all the liabilities. So this will be our what? This would be our ratio that we calculated here. Uh, here, this will be our equity ratio because you see what is this? This is the oh, one, this an example. It's the equity divided by the assets because the assets, these assets, equity plus liabilities is just assets, it's the same. You know this, that assets and equity and uh, liabilities, all liabilities with equity needs to be equal to each other. You know this, right? Basic accounting. Uh, accounting. So we know that uh, assets to equity is equal one divided by 1.4 and we can calculate that one divided 1.4 is equal 71%, 71%. This is in the percentage. So if this will be the equity to the uh, capital, so this is our equity to, uh, sorry, to the assets. So the debt divided by assets needs to be one minus this, I'm sorry, uh, one minus this number, which is 29%, which is exactly, if I will make it like it's, uh, 2857, which is exactly, but, and maybe there's some kind of small differences because of the roundings or some kind of like you see here is a rounding, here is rounding, and the data change because this is daily because it's the market capitalization. So, but this is more or less the same result like here. So from this, from this source that I gave you, and this is this expert source, and when we talking about the expert source, you already know that we are talking about this expert method, right? One of these methods that you need to use is this expert method and exactly I showed you how to do it. So we know that this for this industry utility and now we who is in this industry should be especially interested. Those people who are choosing the company, like for example, the group number three should be in this interested and then no, the other choose something else. So the water, the water industry uh, for me, it's generally, it's generally easy to, to really evaluate and it's easy company to, to, to do during this, during this uh, project. So for your company, right, for your company, you can get the data that the 
the, the for the whole market. So the whole market, the 17 companies uh, has more or less, and I will just use this 29 just to make it easy. 29% is the, the, the capital structure. And this capital structure, this one from here, from the market, the whole total, all the companies, 17 companies in this in this market, it's the long term structure. Because in our classes, in a new report, we will assume that in the long term, the individual companies will just tend to have the same structure as the whole industry because we assume that the whole industry is smarter than the one single company inside this industry. So if there is 17 companies and there is 17 CEOs, 17 very qualified people who earn millions of dollars for managing the companies, and on average, all of those 17 companies has the ratio of market debt to capital, so debt to capital or debt to assets, because I mean, sorry, debt to assets or capital is or de de it's the same. Debt to assets is uh, equal 29%. Then we assume that in the long term, every company will tend to this number, that this number is optimal number. Okay. So now I explain you. There is this, this short, uh, short um, show uh, how to calculate the proportion of the short term uh, capital structure for the equity, short term for the debt, uh, and how to get the, the long term data. OK, the long term data. Uh, this is from this uh, demo the website, the website. And of course, if someone chose like other kind of company, let's say advertising, or I don't know, there are some kind of gaming, right? So there's some game. Maybe this will be maybe it'll be advertising. I don't know what will be some kind of maybe diversified. I don't know what will be the exactly this uh, maybe I information services. I don't know. You can check if you don't, you are not sure. You need to like assume something, right? And then if you sorry, if we choose this other one uh, company in this information services. Oh, maybe software or oh, software entertainment. It's it's because I remember that there was a Blizzard game, right? So for the software is only the debt is only 2.4%. So you see, depending on the on the on the uh, industry, right? Of course, the number of companies is different because obviously there will be more entertainment company producing software than the utility companies because you know the water is like natural monopoly. There also the structures of the uh, will be different. Because it depends on the sector. Okay, so if this would be the sector, then we would assume that long-term uh, market debt to the to the total assets is two percent, and uh, the the debt uh, sorry, so this would be debt to assets would be two percent. So the equity to assets would be ninety-eight percent. So most of these companies are really funded and sponsored and financed by the equity. Okay. Uh, OK, so we know this about the capital st structure, short term and long term, and this will be the important part of your uh, of your research, right? You need to do this in the in this points. Actually, all A, B, C, all these points are related to that. OK, and remember exactly that it's really uh, important to do it in a short term and long term and show, explain what are the differences. Tell, right? Uh, not it's the time in the in the time is the, the difference mostly. But not only just like that briefly, but also uh, my, but um, also for the uh, this, is this. Ah, this is empty book. Actually, this maybe is also not important. Uh, so, uh, so, the, so you know that. Now, the question for you: How much of this thirty-eight percent? is the bank credit and how much is bond? Because now we discussed only the, the uh, uh, structure, but there is also to be discussed the cost, the cost of this uh, this kind of uh, forms of the capital, of the financing of the capital, uh, company. So what is the cost of the bond? It's the YTM, is the cost, cost of uh, debt, of course, long term debt uh, in form. Of bond. And here would be the cost of credit, right? Here is the cost. Of credit and usually. 
it's what? It's YTM plus margin. Uh, sorry, YTM, what I'm saying? Uh, LIBOR. Uh, LIBOR, not YTM, it's LIBOR. If it's in uh, LIBOR in US, right? Mm, if we are talking about the company from US. So all those data that now are will be in the color, color red, all this data, and now here we have the question marks because we don't still don't know what. So those question marks also will be in red because later we'll be talking about the capital asset pricing model and other models. But we are focusing on something that is easier, uh, something that is easier. So exactly this uh, bank credit. So I want you to calculate this cost of credit for your company uh, for the short term and in the long term. And in the uh, long term, it's a uh, short term. It will be just the average from last five years. You take the from these reports can be like this report that I was just uh, uh, just showed you this uh, report of the of this company, right? That day it was written somewhere. You have seen it. Uh, it was uh, written that the cost of the of this uh, revolving revolving credit is equal to. Uh, LIBOR plus 0 0.87875 and in this given period of time it was exactly 264. Historically for five years you just provide this data so you have five numbers here right here we have five numbers one two three four five. Uh, for the bonds you do the same you go to the market for the five years and you write what is the yield of the bonds and you can they can directly take it from the quotes from the uh, from the market right. You have these numbers and now you also need to know because those are the costs, right? So the costs now you need to also know what is the proportion because this 302 million, right? This 302 million, maybe 100 million is in the bank credit form of the bank credit and 200 million is in the bond. So of course, if you will be calculating what is the cost of this capital, so what would be the cost? You cannot make the average because you see that the, the, the values are not proportional half half right because this would be 100 million uh, dollars right and this would be uh, i don't know 200 million dollars and all together they give 300 but the proportion is like one to two right or in other words this is one from three three for 100 from 300 so it would be one divided by three and this would be Two divided by three, and those would be the proportion with which you would waive those, those costs. Those costs, right? So this cost individual for given year, and this proportions individual for given year, only together multiplied by each other and summed together because you see 33 again and 67 gives 100. Then this will give you the long term debt for this. I mean, sorry, the short term debt. Uh, I mean. This is the long term debt, right? So we calculate this in the long term, but this this long term we see in the perspective or for the short time, like five last years. This is the perspective of viewing this long term debt. So long term debt in the in a short period of time. So this will be the better saying long term debt in the short period of time is exactly these numbers. The cost, the, the costs multiplied by the proportions of which is the the bank and the bond. OK, and this will give you uh, five numbers too if you multiply uh, so this is the cost cost one cost two the year two and so on so on right so it will be the same cost cost i will make b one because it will be the bond cost cost b two because there will be the bond from the year number two right and this will be uh, the banking credit and there will be the bond. So if you multiply and then here's the proportions, maybe it will be 33 to 66. Maybe it will be, I don't know, maybe it will be other proportions, right? Let's assume that those are the proportion. Maybe next year will be 25% and here will be 75%. The thing is that this needs to be uh, always equal. Uh, this needs to be always equal 100%. So if you multiply this cost times this plus this times this and you sum it up, you will have for this given year, right? This is for a given year, the year number one. You would have the the uh, long-term debt in uh, this given year. 
long term that in this year this year this year you 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 have it for five years and then if you make it from average from that then you would have a long term debt uh, i mean in the shorter perspective in a shorter perspective now a long term perspective we'll be discussing later just to not make you too much confusing uh, because you see you need to be very uh, attentive for this right very very attentive uh, now do you need some before we move on to the cost of equity do you need some kind of break for refreshing your attention? Uh, it would be nice if we had like a short one. OK, so I understand that till this before the break, till this moment, there is no uh, questions related to to this. What I just said, everything is more or less clear. Did, did you have something like that in the previous classes? Not exactly like uh, in like we had the theory, but not directly into like when you look at the financial statements and you pick the data and then you calculate it. More like just the theory based like definition and what is this like, associated with? I don't know some costs. Okay, understand. But this was also like a a subject that was devoted only for that, or it was just some kind of one lecture amongst many lectures. Or I mean, in, like, the, in different subjects, we had like one or two lectures about this. OK, I understand. So good, because this class is like exactly to how to apply it and it will be like focused on that, on this kind of issue. So it's just not like uh, mentioned during one or two lectures. It was really the core of the subject of this course is exactly this. OK, so now it's uh, 1430 almost. Let's say 10 minutes break is fine if you want 10 or 15. 10 is OK. OK, so 14.30, 14.40, so break, break till 14.40 and then we return to the uh, to the meeting. I mean, you stay here, don't leave the meeting, just, you know, you can uh, have this break. So see you at 14.40.